It's my great pleasure to introduce another amazing speaker to uh, all of you today. Some of you may have seen her presenting at other Build Stuff events over the past couple of years. Um, she's a developer advocate and a head of learning at Nuxt.js, which is a, a progressive JavaScript framework based on Vue.js. She's got over 10 years experience doing front-end development, passionate about JavaScript, about continuing education, learning technology. She's a Microsoft MVP with the Developer Technologies Program. Um, and it is our great pleasure to welcome her to tell you all about going static in a dynamic world with Hasura and Nuxt.js. Please give a big welcome to Debbie O'Brien. Thank you for the amazing intro, Dylan. Okay, uh, where do I start? I just want to first say that it's three years ago that I first uh, spoke at, uh, this is my third build stuff, right? So two, uh, two years ago, I first spoke at Build Stuff in Villanos. It was my first time ever speaking. So for me, it's an honor to be back here for the third time to be speaking. I might not be in Villanos with you, but just pretend I am. I'm virtually there. I'm, my heart is there. Okay, let's get going. So going static in a dynamic world with Hasura and Nux.js. By the way, I do have the chat open in one window and I am live. This is real. This is not a recorded version. So if you do put emojis in the chat, I will actually see them and I might smile more. So, you know, do that. Okay, this is me. Uh, as Dylan already said, pretty much kind of covered everything. And I just want to like take you to this photograph because um, what happened at the last Villainous, the last Bill Stuff conference was I was sitting in a bar, as you do, Sky Bar, 21st floor, and I'm sitting there and these other developers came up and said to me, we are thinking of doing a conference in Antarctica. Would you like to come? And I was like, what the hell? So yes, this is me on the cruise ship in Antarctica coding where I gave my talk in Antarctica thanks to being at Bill Stuff previously. If not, I would never have gone to Antarctica. So that's another thing I have to thank Bill Stuff for. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much about me. Had a learning developer advocate at Nuxt, writer, ultimate course as a teacher at Vue School, a Google developer expert, media developer expert, and Microsoft most valuable professional. And you can follow me LinkedIn, Debbie O'Brien, or Twitter, Debs underscore O'Brien. Let's go. This is what I'm going to cover today, right? Nux.js. If you don't know what Nux.js is, I'm going to tell you all about it. it. It's basically a meta framework on top of you. So if you're a Vue developer, you should know what Nuxt is. If you're not, then start coming to Vue and start using Nuxt. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how static sites work. I'm going to cover Hasura and GraphQL. If you don't know what they are, don't worry, I'll cover it. I'm going to cover build hooks and trigger with Netlify deployment. If you don't know what Netlify is, it's kind of like you know Azure. You might have heard of that. Well, Netlify is just another one, it's just a little bit different because it's uh, for static sites. And I'm going to uh, cover the Nux.js full static. And if I have time, I might get into some serverless stuff. So hang on for that. I know, right? That's just kind of like a lot of information to take in. And you're like, whoa, you're going to cover all of that? Yeah, but don't worry. I will take it slow. It will be fun. So just relax and come along for the ride. So first of all, Nuxt, it's an intuitive view framework. So what Nuxt gives you is a lot of benefits. For example, we have file-based routing. So it's a front-end framework, right? You're, instead of having to create routing, you just put a view file in the pages folder and you get automatic routing. Now that's cool. So there's no router.js file to maintain and you get automatic code splitting out of the box. What is code splitting? It means only the JavaScript code for that page is actually going to be downloaded. So it's going to wait, make your website much more performant. And that comes out of the box. You do nothing. You just put a page in the pages folder and you get all that. So cool. Okay, prefetching. Prefetching is great. So what that does is when the uh, JavaScript, when, when the browser is kind of like, you know, not doing anything important, it goes ahead and it starts prefetching all those other links so that they're ready to load. So as soon as the user clicks on the about page, bang, it's just like so fast because it's already been prefetched. So really cool. Automatic component imports, right? You know, when you have your components and you put import the footer from the footer and then you put components the footer. Yeah, in Nux, we're really lazy. We don't like to add all this extra work. So we just do it all for you. So you just use it in your template. You don't have to import it. It just automatically imports and it's tree shaken as well. So it's really performant, super cool feature. This was added just about like four months ago. It's my favorite feature. There's more than 145 modules. So if you want to add internationalization, if you want to add a progressive web app, if you want to add anything, TypeScript even, uh, we have a module for it all. And there's a website, modules.nuxjs.org, and you can go in there, find them, and use them. It's fantastic. 
So more benefits, really. Progressive web apps. This is one of my favorite. A progressive web app is going to make your website more performant. Because we have a module, all you have to do is just install it, and then it just does it all for you. It creates that uh, server worker file for you. It creates everything for you. You just have to change the icon from the Nooks logo to your own one, and then it's going to actually generate all those ones you know, for the iPad, the iPhone, the Apple, the Android, and all that kind of stuff. Um, easy, out of the box, just works fantastic. Server-side rendering. So we can do server-side rendering with Nuxt. So that's kind of really, really cool. It's a framework that can do server-side rendering, but it can also do static site generation. And you can change it with just one config. So you can start off by building a server-side rendering application and then decide, you know what, I actually want this to be static generated and you just change one command or I just want client side rendering like a typical single page application you just change one command so you can do that at the end at the start in the middle whenever you want it's just one command really really cool right static sites of the 90s now this is the most ionic static site that you like ever created probably because it's one of the only ones that's still live today yes this is still live today built in 1996 by Warner Brothers Space Jam the movie um, this site is brilliant. Now you would look at this site and think it does nothing, but they're all links. All those planets are links. They're just kind of really badly designed because we didn't have uh, those kind of you know cool things that we have nowadays to make it as you know animation and that you could see this. But do go to this website, click all those links. It's really really cool. I'm going to tell you a little story about Space Jam because it's really interesting. This is the actual original. Um, what well, you know, their to do list, right? And the 9th of the 5th, 96, Space Jam. We're going to add graphical links of sponsors. We're going to integrate in the site. We're going to have illustrations. We're going to have games and lots of fun stuff. And it's going to be Solar System. Like, this is so cool. This is their ideas coming on the paper and how they built this website. And as you can see, games and lots of fun, right? And that's really, really important. Static site, and they were still having fun in 1996. Now, this is the actual uh, planning of the website. And just if you look at it, so you don't have to click on those to see what's going on. You can just look here and see. We've got like animated character sketches, got trailer and video clips, right? There's a showy basketball game. Um, they remember this is a static site in 96, right? When we didn't have all these cool things, but look at what they were able to do. And this is really, really, really cool. There's so much. There's a Looney Tunes trivia game, which I lost when I played, um, but you can play that and you can kind of like try and win. It's really, really amazing. So uh, this is uh, from Rolling Stone, and I thought this was appropriate because, you know, Rolling Stone and we're in a, a rock conference here. So uh, every, even today, with its basic HTML, pre-broadband, file sizes, and flash-free architecture, this site is easy to navigate, even on a mobile phone. The movie clips, encoded in QuickTime, are somewhat grainy but still viewable, and nothing was designed to still work after 19 years. It was simply designed to work. I wanted you to kind of just... Take that sentence away with you. Nothing was designed to still work after 19 years. It was simply designed to work. Uh, pretty amazing. And this is the website, right? If you if you ever did website back in the 90s, we used frames. Like it was a terrible thing. But that's you know, uh, that's what we used to have to do, right? And this is one of the things that doesn't work. Um, is the um, Unfortunately, this only works in a Macintosh running Netscape. So sorry, Windows users, right? So this website has outlived the browser. That's incredible, right? It's really, really, really cool. There's no more Netscape anymore. For those of you that don't know what Netscape was, it was like Internet Explorer, only like worse. <laughs> but it was, you know, back then, it was what we had. Um, yeah, this is the trivia quiz that I lost on. So if you get to play that and win, and you might kind of look at that and say, wow, look at these crazy, like, you know, all that background stuff and all that kind of crazy colors. We didn't have a lot of colors back then. That was, that was pretty much all we had. And to be able to just get a background and just like, you know, extend it over the whole uh, back background, that was something that was like really cool to do. So that's why, you know, we did it. And you can see the footer was all the way up in the middle because we didn't have view heights. We didn't have any of those things. So yeah, amazing website. And uh, I even love the um, the no, the 404 page. Well, we've got no idea how you got here, but you've discovered a now empty page of information. Congratulations. Now please go somewhere else. Thank you. I love that. So Lighthouse 6, right? What is Lighthouse 6? So if you've done a Lighthouse test in, in the past to check that your speed of your internet, um, Lighthouse is now in version six. And it was released about a couple of months ago. And that's for basically testing your performance. So we are now on version six of Lighthouse. And the big changes, first contentful paint, for example, that used to be worth 20%, it's now 15%. Another major change is that the largest contentful paint is now worth 25%. And the total blocking time is 25%. So if your website is like it got a lot of blocking things, CSS, JavaScript, et cetera, then you're going to be penalized for that. If your largest content will paint, the amount of thing that's got to be painted so the user can actually see something, um, that's going to be penalized at 25%. 
So this is the biggest change that just came out this year for the lighthouse testing. And Space Jam still scores 100. Now that is cool. So they have done nothing to do anything else to this site. It still scores 100, even though we've like, you know, done everything we can to kind of, you know, try and penalize every single thing. First contentful paint, 0 0.3 seconds. Amazing. Largest contentful paint, 0 0.7 seconds. Amazing. Another reason why this site is amazing is its performance. So just keep that in mind. And uh, kudos to these people who created it. it Donald Buckley, Dara Lynn Weiss, Michael Tritter, Jen Brown, and Andrew J. Stackler. So well done to these. And uh, yeah, in case you're wondering what happens if Space Jam goes down, Space Jam did actually go down one time. They, they actually took it down. Warner Brothers uh, took it down and said, oh, nobody's looking at this site. We don't need this live. And one of the people who were working there actually said, whoa, no, you can't take that site down. Put it back up. And they put it back up. And then there's a Twitter bot now that's created that is uh, sending out tweets every couple of hours. And it's checking to see if that's actually live. So that's kind of really cool. So Space Jam website from 96 is never going away. So that's great. So the 90s static is very static. Yeah, I know, Michael, I know. I mean, like, although we had fun and stuff, yeah, you're right. It's it's a little bit too static. We, we you know, we've evolved from them. I get you. I know what you're saying. Yeah, so let's server-side server, right, server side render all our pages instead, right? Isn't that the cool thing to do? Because that's what we did as soon as we built static sites. Then we went, let's server-side render everything. So, you know, we, we are sharing code between pages, right? So, you know, we don't have to have those frames anymore. So that's great. Uh, we can get our data from a database instead of just putting it all into the HTML. And we can populate the page on the server. So, you know, that's good. And um, then just serve the rendered HTML to the client. Perfect solution. It's even got good search engine optimization. So, yeah, server-side rendering is a pretty good solution. But here's where the book comes in. Call the server on every page, right? I've got to call that server. Every time I go to a page, I'm calling that server. And that's a lot of calls. Um, there's minor page flickers. If you've ever done kind of server-side rendering, you know that page kind of flickers as it kind of like reloads because it's reloading all the time. So that's kind of a little bit of a downfall. You need a server. Yeah, if you've got to do server-side rendering, you need a server and servers cost money, 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 money. It's not as performant. It's not as performant as a static site because the static site's already rendered. The server's done on the server. It's still performant, but it's still got to go to that server, get it and render it. The front end code and back end code is mixed together. Now, probably not so much these days because we got like Nux, but when we first started building server side rendering, it was all those, you know, .NET and Java and PHP and all that front end code is shoved into the back end. We just had to like figure it all out and, you know, try and, you know, pull our styles in between all this .NET stuff and not know what's going on. So that was a bit of a, yeah, that wasn't really fun. Client side rendering, Michael. Yes, that's exactly what we did then. The front end kind of went, right, let's just do client side rendering and then we can get away from that back end and get away from the server side rendering and put everything on the client. Great solution. Because that's called a single page application. So you've got one page. So you can share components across page. You know, you call it components. So that's great. That's cool. Front end code is separate because now I'm in a single page application. I'm in my world. I'm in just front end world. I don't need to know about .NET. I've got everything under my control. Brilliant. Faster navigation, right? Because it's all in the client. It's all bang, bang, bang. I'm not going to a server to get anything. It's just there. Excellent. Love faster navigation. And there's no page flickers because there's only one page, single page, one page. So I've got no page flickers. I'm just like using JavaScript to just like recalculate uh, the DOM and add those um, things in. So that's cool. Client side rendering. We're just rendering on the client in the browser. Bang, perfect. This is a great solution. But there's always a but, always a but. The initial page load is quite slow. Now, why is that? It's because it's a JavaScript framework. Single page application is all JavaScript, right? So it needs to get the whole JavaScript bundle of all your application. It needs to download that before it can actually, you know, render the pages because everything's in the JavaScript. And then as soon as it downloads that initial bundle, then it's super fast. But the initial page load is a little bit slow. Simple HTML page. So basically what that means is if you like saw a single page application and saw the page like view page source, you'd actually see view the, the code. There's nothing there. It's just div ID equals app and then like, you know, JavaScript then loads everything else. So the marketing team don't really like that. It renders the page on the client side after the JavaScript loads. So it's not great for search engine optimization. And if you try to sell a single page application to marketing, you will know that they're just going to like say no. They don't know what JavaScript is. They don't know what single page applications are. They just know it's bad for SEO and they just go, no way. So yeah, it's not great for performance. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great. Not compared to server-side rendering and not compared to static sites. 
So you really think static is the future? Yes, Michael, I really do think static is the future. And I'm going to show you, Michael, just, just bear with me. Static sites are back, right? Now, when I say static sites are back, because we started with static sites, and then we went to server-side rendering, we went to single page application, and now we're going back to static. Circle, everything goes around in a circle at the end of the day. So follow me on this circle, because it's really cool. So with static sites, we get free hosting, which is obviously cheaper. I mean, free is cheaper than paying for a server, right? So yeah, this is cool. Um, Pre-rendering the page is faster. So we already pre-render the page. So your page is already built, and that's obviously going to be faster. We need no server. Now, because we don't need a server, it's obviously cheaper as well, but it's all obviously safer because no one's going to hack that server. I mean, obviously, there's always a server somewhere, right? But we don't have to worry about that server because some amazing company like Microsoft with their um, static web apps or Netlify, they're doing all that server um, security and infrastructure and all that kind of stuff, and we don't have to worry about it. So we're not going to get all those attacks that, you know, when the server was in the office and it was getting attacked. We're not going to have to worry about that, which is, makes it extremely safe. Excellent search engine optimization. Everything's there. Everything's rendered. So your, your SEO is just, yeah, out of the box, just amazing. And the performance is excellent. We already saw that with the, um, with the uh, Jamstack website, uh, Space Jam. So we already saw excellent performance. So yeah, static sites are greener which reduces the carbon footprint. Now, this is really, really interesting because, you know, we've seen uh, now, like in this last couple of months, you know, well, last, yeah, seven months ago when it all happened and all went, you know, and we shut the world down. We shut the world down for two months. And I swear to God, the beaches here in Mallorca are incredible. The sea was crystal, crystal clear. Um, the fish were everywhere. It was like incredible. So being greener is really going to help our environment. And you might think, oh, just by taking my website off a server and putting onto static hosting is not really going to help. Every little helps. Every single little thing does. So just keep that in mind. The IT sector already consumes an estimated 7% of global electricity. So yeah, we need to be greener. This web page is dirtier than 70% of web pages tested. So I was testing a server-side rendering page, and that's what I came up with. That's using a website that tests uh, your CO2 emissions. So that's kind of not good. Now compare that. That's nine trees. For one website, we need to plant nine trees just to get the amount of carbon that nine trees absorb in a year for that one website just because it's server-side rendered. So just, you know, if you're going to build server-side rendering, plant more trees. And this is Space Jam. This web page is greener, is cleaner than 95% of web pages tested at 0.05 grams of CO2. And again, Space Jam, they didn't even haven't done anything since 1996. And they've it's been up live for so many years, 24 years or something now. And it's um it's one of the greenest websites out there. So congratulations, Space Jam, you rock. So performance matters, right? Performance really matters. And you know, we tested, um, this is a great server-side rendering application built in Nooks. It's a great website, uh, really, really well built. And you know, they're getting 82 performance and it's not bad, they're in orange, they're not in red. I've seen a lot of red. I didn't want to show you the worst. I wanted to show you the best, but they're not getting the best of performance. Uh, this is the Nooks.js website. This is all built uh, as a static application and this is getting performance 99. I mean, you know, we, we haven't even got a hundred, that's fine always can be worked on. But as you can see, just going static, our performance, we didn't even do anything to get that. It just out of the box, we got like that big performance. So that's really something to look into. So what about content? Okay, so content, we generate your site, right? So we have a command called Nux generate that's gonna generate your application. Um, the build is then cached, right? So we're gonna cache that build so we don't have to generate the whole website again. We only have to generate the content. That makes it super fast, right? Because you're not rebuilding all the time. You're just building content. You're not building the actual application. Let me show you. So with Nux full static, you don't have to expose your API to the public because everything is cached, right? You can decide when to publish new content from your API by regenerating your website. And full static is much faster because API calls have a bit of latency. They always take a little bit longer. Payload files are cached, and then there's offline support with a PWA because you're just going into this payload folder. You're not going to a server to get all your data, et cetera. So full static. You just have to do target static in your Nux config and run Nux generate, and bang, you've got a static site generated. So if you've already got a server-side rendered application up and running or a single page application, you make that one change and then add that command to your deployment, and then bang, that's it, simple. That's it. Talk over. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm only messing. Um, so yeah, that's it. As simple as that. 
Now, let me show you. So I'm using GitHub. We've got our code and we're just going to, you know, do a Git push. And then I've set this up to deploy to Netlify. I'm using Netlify as an example because it's free and I like free. Um, but you could use Versal or Azure Static Web Apps or GitHub Pages or any other um, static deployment. So then Netlify is going to call Nux Generate and Nux Generate is going to basically start that application and it's going to generate the static HTML. And then you've got your website with that lovely hello as a static site. Simple as that. Really easy, right? What about data, Michael? Yeah, what about data? Seriously? Okay, you all want data. Oh. Okay, well, we, we, we can do data. So I have a I have a website where I put all my conferences. And oh my God, I'm just seeing now that I actually forgot to put the Bill Stuff conference on there. Um, so Naringa's gonna kill me, right? Because she was like, everyone, you know, you gotta like promote the conference and Debbie forgets, damn. So, right. Um, this is my, co my, my conferences are here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna add it right now. And then like, I'll just like in the slides, I'll change that slide and then she won't notice the difference. Right, so how are we gonna add it? So my data is in Hasura, right? Because I'm, I'm a front end developer. I don't know anything about backend. Uh, I mean, I know .NET, but I don't know how to write .NET. I just know it exists. So Hasura is, is where you can get real time GraphQL APIs instantly. It's an open source engine. It connects your databases and your microservices. Uh, you backend people know all about that. I don't, it just know it does it. It just connects it and auto generates a production ready GraphQL backend. So it's as simple as that. And I'm gonna show you, let me show you in the actual Hasura, right? So there's my website, right? And I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna refresh that so you can see that, you know, that I haven't done anything to change it, it's still there. So I'm going into Hasura and uh, this is, I've already logged in and I've already got my table set up. Now, if I wanted to create a table, I just do this, create a table and I could call it uh, meetups, for example. And then I could just like create a column name and call place and a column type, you know, text. And oh my God, we're like, you know, there's no place these days. So let's just call it remote. Everything's remote these days. And you know, you can even just like put a default value in and stuff. So you can get primary keys, you can do all that kind of stuff. And then you just like add your table, simple. I mean, I have no like backend skills and bang, I can just create tables. So this is great. But let's go into the one I've already created, which is the conferences. Now I've like got all this stuff all these conferences in of all the conferences that I've spoken in. And as you can see, I don't even have to search, but I could actually just use this to filter. But I've got Build Stuff Lithuania from last year, right? So I'm actually going to just duplicate it, right? I'm going to clone that. So I'm going to clone that. And I've got Build Stuff Lithuania, great. I've got the place. Um, Villainous, it's kind of sad, but let's just put remote. Oh, because it's true, I'm not there. And oh my God, look at the date. Actually, that's weird, isn't it? Um, it's actually like, you know, just a day away from like last year. That's cool. Um, so yeah, that's all good. I'm a speaker. I don't have my slides uploaded, so let's remove that. And the talk, that is not the talk. The talk is, what is my talk? Um, let's just put Hasura and Nux.js. Hasura and Nux, right? So da da da. there we go. I think everything else is pretty much okay. And I'm just gonna press save. Bang. So I've got the affected rows. That's now in there. And if I go to my application, I'm not gonna see anything, right? Because you know, it's like it's not there yet. But I can see what's going on by checking my GraphQL. So I've got a GraphQL thing in here, right? So this is kind of cool. Now you can see here, this is my my endpoint, right? I get an endpoint, just bang, it just gives it to me. So I don't have to do that. Um so in here, my explorer. I can basically say, right, my conferences, what I want to do is I want to see, uh, what do I want to see? I want to see the, the country. I want to see the date. Um, uh, let me get the image, the name, for example, the place, and whatever else you want to get, right? And we can order it. So I can just like order it by date, for example. Let's do it descending. And then this is my, my query, right? Now I've done nothing. I've just clicked boxes. So I'm just clicking boxes and I've got my query. Now if I press the play button, Bang, I've got my data. Now, um, it's kind of just giving me this one. It's giving me all those kind of, you know, conferences. They're all in there. I'm hoping that my, um, I don't even know if I saved it. Let me go in and make sure it's in there by by checking. I probably didn't even save it because if you don't save it, um, it doesn't really work, right? So let's just double check in there. Got the wrong date in there. There we go. I didn't save it. Oh, that was very clever of me. Right, let's just do that again. Don't you hate when things don't work out? Live coding, you should never do live coding. So the place equals Lithuania. I don't even know if it's the place or the country, but anyway, we'll run that and we get nothing. So it's Vilnius. 
Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I can't even find it. Place equals I equals. So when you do equals, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get like a strict equals. So let me really nice, right? And run the query and nothing found. I don't know. Did I delete it? I have no idea what's going on here, but normally this works. Oh damn. Right, let's just insert a row quickly, right? Because then it's easier. So I'm just gonna put um conf name remote place remote date this worked great in practice by the way everyone oh, typical right uh let's just uh put the country as lithuania yeah if you don't press I, I mean i did press the save button so invalid never mind i'm going to come back to that in a minute because i know it worked and for some reason it didn't save it but as you can see that's how you work the graphical right so that does get you all the conferences but for some reason it didn't like or did, maybe i just put the wrong year i didn't put the right year did i I changed the date and I didn't change the year. So if I, if I go down to here, it's gonna find it. That's what I did wrong. Oh, you see, I'm still in last year. Anyway, um, let's see what happens there um, by checking out what's happening in my application. So I go to my application and I'm gonna refresh this, right? Nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna see anything. Um, and if I scroll down, you'll see even up to last year, dun, 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 build stuff. Lithuania remote so I'm in last year because I think 2019 is better than 2020 so I'm staying in 2019 but this is the one I added as you've seen here right you see and you've seen I added remote and I added Hasura and Nuxt so my data is there but I didn't find it because I've so much going on but yeah that's what happens when you when you live in the past anyway let's go back to the slides and uh, we've seen this so that's cool and we've seen our, our endpoint that's great and um, we've seen how our GraphQL a, uh, playground works so the great thing about this is that we can just like, you know, select that query, right? And then you will basically able to just put it into our application. So let me just go into how Hasura and Nuxt works. We install and register HTTP, that's a module. So you install that, you put it in your modules, and then you just create a plugin, right? So creating a plugin in Nuxt is quite easy. I'm not gonna go too deep into this code. It's a little bit hardcore, but it's quite easy. We're just basically like, you know, getting the HTTP in the config from the context. We're injecting it, I'm calling it Hasura, and I'm creating it and prefixing it with my API URL, which is my endpoint. And then I'm just injecting it using um, JavaScript bind. So that's that code. Then I register the plugin, because if not, you can't use it in the Nux config. And then I import GraphQL and import print. So I can use GraphQL in my application. And then I'm gonna add my query. This is the query I got from, you know, from the GraphQL, I put it in there. So that's great. I need to change the date, otherwise I won't see it, right? And then I use async data and I go async data, uh, const data equals await app, uh, his Hasura. Uh, print my query, I've already showed you the query. And then return conferences data.conferences, right? So Using async data, that's a Nuxt hook to get the data. Um, and that's all I need to do. So now I can just use it in my template. So v4 conference and conferences, v4 is a view directive. And then I've got like um, conference.name. I just seen in the chat, the country is Lithuania and the capital is Vilnius. I know, I'm sorry, I spelt it wrong, I did everything wrong. Uh, thank you for that. I will learn how to spell Vilnius for next year. <laughs> um, I know, so that was a lot to take in, right? And I probably went like super fast, I know, but, um, but yeah. This is how it works and it's super simple and I you know just encourage you to check it out yourself and like just as you can see like I'm going you know github I'm deploying to Netlify Netlify is doing Nux generate and then it's like going to the fetch API it's calling Hasura and then it's like returning that data and then it's um just rendering that page and that's what makes it super fast so it's really cool that you can do all that what about data changing oh Michael you're making my life difficult here aren't you I mean you I just live coded is that not like good enough for you Okay, so data changes, as you can see, you know, your data changes and you want to see it live on the website. And you saw that mine was live on the website. How did I do that? So you can do that by creating an event trigger. And we have events in Hasura. And let me go into Hasura again and just show you where they are. It's really simple. You just go into events. Yeah, I know I messed up. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, and then event triggers. I just press create and I create an event trigger. And I put in the name so I can just call it like, you know, build conf or whatever and then select the table i want it to be the conferences table and what do i want to do on insert on update on delete or just on insert and update and then i'm going to put my webhook url in here now this is what i get from netlify because i'm using netlify or whatever you know platform you're using you put that in you create create that event trigger now i've already created it here as, as you can see so i'm not going to press that button so that's how that works um 
I just showed you that. And then the build hook, this comes from Netlify. You just go into build hooks in Netlify. You put in a name, select the branch being master, press save, and then you add it. So you get this kind of like, yeah, URL kind of thing right now. Don't go copying that one because that's a fake one and you won't mess up my build minutes. Um, so yeah, then you just take that and you basically uh, put it into the webhook URL in Hasura and bang, that means it's just going to build your site every time your data changes. So that's really, really cool. So um, basically every time I modify data, uh, what it's going to do is Hasura, you press save and it's going to go, it's going to deploy to Netlify and it's going to then run Nux Generate, it's going to fetch the API, go to Hasura, return the data and then it's going to say, hang on a minute, you didn't change anything, you just changed data. So I'm going to skip Webpack. I don't need to build with Webpack anymore. I just need to change that data. So because you're skipping Webpack, you're not creating new bundles, you're just changing your data. It's just going to create those payload files. It's going to be super fast. I know you like that, books, don't you? And that's pretty much how that works, which is really cool. So then it basically gets you those static HTML and you got your awesome new title bang on the page. So that's Super cool. Nuxt full static calls the payload and page change. There's a crawler for dynamic pages. So if you've got like, you know, blog posts and all the blog post names, um, it's just going to crawl those pages. Once you're linking to them, if it's a secret page and nobody can find it, the crawler won't find it either. But if it's linked to, uh, you don't have to do anything to generate dynamic pages. Now that's super cool. Um, we have a live preview. I'm not going to have time to show you that, but you can basically, well, I'll show you really quickly, but there's a live preview. Uh, so you can preview it before you actually, uh, before it deploys, which is kind of really, really cool. And then the build is cached, as I told you, and you only generate on content change. What about dynamic content? Oh, Michael, you're always making it difficult for me. Like, come on, I just showed you so much cool stuff. Okay, okay. Hybrid. Let's go hybrid. So we have static site generation, otherwise known as SSG. We have server side rendering, otherwise known as SSR. That's your, you know, your dynamic data. So the conferences, right? It's changing. You don't want to rebuild your application all the time, even though you saw how easy it was. But no, you want to complain and you want it to be dynamic. Okay, fine. Let's be hybrid. Let's do server side rendering and static site generation together. Now that's cool. Stale while revalidating. This returns the data from cache. So it's stale. It then sends the fetch request and it revalidates it. It then renders the page with the up to date data. Now that's cool. That's cool. Um, Nuxt serverless. Now Nuxt serverless is amazing. I'm going to quickly show you uh, Nuxt serverless and how this works. So Nuxt serverless, you get static site on a static hosting. With serverless functions, you can server render dynamic pages. Now that is a lot to take in. And when someone told me this, I was like, what? So I'm going to show you. So let me go in here to my demo. Now it's a really terrible demo. I know there's nothing exciting about this demo. What you just have to think about here is I'm going to go to the about page. The about page is statically generated. Now, how Nuxt works is it's client-side rendering when you're doing um, page changes. So every time you go into a different route, you're rendering on the client. It's already got everything. And that's how, how fast and how you got the progressive web app and everything like that. So we're client-side. You can see this down here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in to this a little bit because it's a really small. There we go. That's better. So um, you can see that this is client-side rendering because I'm navigating. So now what happens? I'm going to refresh that page. And it's going to say it's server side rendered two hours ago because it was built on Netlify two hours ago because um, that's when it was last deployed, when it was last regenerated. This is a static page. It was built two hours ago. Now, if I go to the dynamic page and I click in here and I go to the next page or this page, whatever one, let me just reload it. And it's going to tell me it was server side rendered one second ago, two seconds ago, right? So it was server side rendered as soon as I clicked that. And you look at the cold start and the generate time, like 12 milliseconds, like that's super fast, right? So this is like, you know, I'm going to get client side rendering because I'm a navigating. I reload. You can see the server side rendering two hours ago, but my dynamic page is server side rendered uh, on the fly um, a second ago. Right now, I'm mixing static side generation and server side rendering on Netlify. Now, if you know what Netlify is, it is for static sites. It is not for it doesn't. Have, it's not server side render. You can't put you know Node.js up there, for example. And I've even like done a couple of examples here. Um, I've got Versal, so it's running on Versal as well. Once Versal doesn't break anything, no great. Uh, it's working on Versal as well. It's working on Cloud Cloudflare. 
right? Just the same. Um, and it's working on GitHub pages. Now let me zoom in there so you can just see that a little bit better. Uh, GitHub pages, as you all know, um, is like it's GitHub pages, right? It's a static. This is as static as static can get. So I'm literally um, putting server side rendering on GitHub pages. Now that is cool. If you do not tell me that is cool, then that is just cool. So yeah, you can basically like put in here home uh, about um, client side rendered because I'm navigating, reload, server side rendering on GitHub pages. I am server side rendering on GitHub pages. So this is basically how this works, right? Um, this is really, 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 really cool. And we are working with Azure as well. So we're going to have Azure Functions working on there as well. Obviously, Netlify is using Lambda Functions. And we're going to have the um, Azure Functions. And you'll be able to deploy to Azure Static Web Apps uh, using um, serverless functions and statically generating your website and then having dynamic pages. So my conferences page can be server side rendered and I don't need to um, create build hooks and I don't need to regenerate the whole site just when I change that one thing in Hasura. So that is really, really cool. Now, you're kind of saying, um, when is this coming? So Nook serverless. Oh, oh, I went too fast. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Nook serverless. Like this is basically, you know, if you're in JavaScript, uh, if you're in basketball terms, you know, your your hook there, your uh, where you're going to put the basketball in, that's static, right? The net is static. The people are static because they're never really changing places. They might be waving their hands. They can be interactive. They can kind of be moving, but they're static. They don't need to be rebuilt. If you're going to like rebuild this scene all the time, you would leave the people, you'd leave the basketball net, but the dynamic are those characters who are playing the basketball. So in my web. Uh, site, the conferences table, the work workshop tables, that would be the dynamic one, right? So that's basically how that works. Now, what do you do to get Nux serverless running? How do I get this? So in your Nux config file, we're using target static because we want to host on static because we don't want to pay for service because we want free and I like free. And then we use serverless and we say static. I want the about page, the contact page, the index page, I want all those pages to be static. So when you build that application, I want you to go and generate those pages and ignore the rest because the rest are going to be built on the server. That's cool. That's it. That's like, welcome to the future. And you know, seriously, this is so cool. Now you might say, when I want this, I want this right now, and you can't have it right now because it's the future. And the future comes in the future. But what if I was to say, that you know, you could have a Chris have this for Christmas. This is your early Christmas present. Now I've seen on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, but I have seen on Twitter people are putting up Christmas trees. Everyone is like going crazy to celebrate Christmas right now because I think we're going to be locked down again or something, or or never going to be able to get out. So they're all putting their Christmas trees up. So um, I'm going to tell you, Christmas is starting early. You're going to get your Christmas present earlier than Christmas. And it's going to be a good Christmas. This Christmas is going to be a great Christmas. So watch out because this is coming very, 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 very soon. Um, so why static? Just to recap, no server, cheaper and safer. You've got better offline support. There's better performance. It reduces the carbon footprint. Very important. Dynamic content with stale while uh, revalidating. So this is all happening with static sites. And that's why static sites, you've got to think static but you can be dynamic and this is possible with Nuxt. So seriously, my question to you is, are you Nuxt? Because I certainly am after that. I hope you all are. And seriously, thank you very much. I'm Debbie O'Brien, Head of Learning and Developer Advocate. My website is debbie.codes. If you want to see that, that, that's open source. Go and check it out. There's loads of mistakes in there as well. So, you know, I know. Um, but do check that out. And I've written a few courses on Apollo and GraphQL and ViewSchool. And I've got a video, uh, YouTube, um, so you can check more things on Nuxt. So you can check all that from my site. And uh, Space Jam, next year, is Space Jam, a new legacy is coming out. And I really hope that they're going to rebuild that website and use Nuxt and have that as a static site with server-side rendering. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie. That was fantastic. <laughs> I think that was one of the most uh, exciting and, and exhilarating talks that I've ever seen about web technology. Um, I have a question. So if anyone else has questions, drop them in the chat and we'll, we'll pick them up. I have a question. Where did you find things like the to-do list from the team who built the Space Jam website? I know, like, right? I where did you find that stuff? I just did the internet. <laughs> I just did a lot of research and somehow I just managed to um, find it. I was, I was researching for this talk and I spent ages and ages and, um, and I just came across it, but yeah. And I came across, like I read a lot of articles about how they took it down and put it back up again. And yeah. 
it was only because one of the employees was still working there. If not, that website would be gone. We would never yeah. see it. And so it's, it's one of the, the sort of remarkable things about technology sometimes. Um, I have a, a site that I built in 1997, which is still online somewhere that I've not touched. I've just kind of moved the files and it's on GitHub pages now. Um, and it's astonishing how, because, you know, there, there's always this thing in the web of, oh, why don't browsers move faster? Why don't they deprecate this? Why don't they deprecate that? But you can, you know, someone put a website online 24 years ago now that still works. And you don't need to find an emulator to run it on, and you don't need to do all this kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, that, that's uh, sometimes when people are like, oh, we'll just do it, you know, compare that to the number of websites that were just a massive flash animation. And now those are gone, you know, they are pretty much consigned to the, the dustbin of history. Um, but yeah, anything Apple that renders. Flash. 